Hello my friends, I was finally able to get my hands on a Carolina Craftsman kit. I've been seeing a lot about this kit company over the past few years. So, obviously I was pretty curious to see what kind of kit was available from this Carolina Craftsman kit maker. The kit we're going to build is the Newport Post Office and is the second part in their Newport series of kits. The inspiration for the kit came from an old post office in Plaisto, New Hampshire and it looks like this. This is a little bit of a review build. I'm going to first talk about what I found in the kit. Uh, the, the types of materials that are in the kit, the things that make it a craftsman kit. And then we're going to pick some colors for it. We're going to go through a different, all the different colors in my paint palette and try to throw them together and see what sticks, so to speak. I don't want to paint the kit exactly as seen on the box. Um, and then also in the instructions they use a totally different uh, color configuration namely burgundy and cream however I'm thinking of using green uh, and gray, gray for the roof green for the trim cream for the walls and I've got and I have to find uh, a nice monochromatic a palette before I start because I really don't want to uh, haphazardly go uh, change as I go along. However, I have an idea of what colors I'm going to use and uh, we'll just test them out after we go over uh, what's in the kit. Now I know a few of you are waiting to find out what I say about the instructions because we all know or most of it, many of us know what it's like to open up a craftsman box car and find out that what the instructions look like. You know, I, I bought a snow plow a few years ago. You've probably heard me uh, lament on that. However, these instructions are pretty good. Now, they're not going to make you an expert with this kit. They are going to get you to expertly build the kit with some basic techniques. And the instructions actually suggest if you are not interested in the basic techniques, to which I suggest you should be interested in those basic techniques, to go to scottymason.com and check out his videos. The Scotty Mason vi videos are pretty good and talk about some advanced techniques, not techniques that I use per se, but you know, they're, they are effective techniques that obviously are used to uh, share skills with a, with a newer modeler, uh, 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 someone who's not so confident with craftsman kits. Uh, you could watch my videos too, but uh, whatever. Whatever. I'm not going to DJT this thing. So the instructions will get you to the end of the kit. And if you use the colors that I use, then you can get your structure built like mine. With a few different changes to the instructions, which are suggested by the designer, uh, we can make this kit look even a little bit more realistic. A few notable components of this kit I'd like to share with you are the, the crown mold that goes above the store. This isn't an integral part of the kit. It's something that I'm going to use. However, in the instructions, there are a few different types of... Uh, under soffit trim kind of like a fascia up at the top of the wall it's not really in the fascia area but just below it um, 
you could do corbels or corbits or whatever they're called. I'm not an architect, I'm a builder, you know. So, uh, <clears throat> I've got those. We also have a plaster of Paris chimney. Very well done. Just a, one or two bubbles in the the chimney and that really didn't bother me as I have a gel CA here which can fix those up lickety split. I also like that there are laser cut construction paper shingles. Those are super realist and with just a two tricks we can make those shingles look very realistic like I'm talking the real deal and I'm not talking painting one shingle at a time you'll it'll it's done lickety split and you'll see it in just a few minutes the laser cut wood walls are nicely cut they're cut all the way through so that you don't have to take out your knife and worry about breaking the parts uh, all of the parts fitted fit nicely into the openings uh, the windows on the porch are a little loose and uh, may need a little shimming in the inside just to make sure there's no light goes around on the outside of those and the clock tower window cat shut up it's a little tight However, we were able to deal with all those things in the build. So you get a, a plastic part that's a little tight, pull out your sandpaper. Give it a rub around the outside. Wait till it fits. Call her a day, Jack. Now we took our Grant Line windows and affixed them to painter's tape and laid them down on my painting board. Now I didn't tape the painters tape to the board I just want to keep the windows together because once you start spraying them with spray paint they go poof and go everywhere and so we painted our windows uh, kind of an olive green with a flat spray paint. Now it's winter time in Canada where I live and you can't really use a spray paint at cold temperature otherwise your paint goes on really thick. Have you ever, have you ever had it happen where the paint bubbles up and doesn't adhere to the board? That's probably because the can of paint is too cold even in the summer this will happen to you so the way I fix that is to put the can of paint into a warm bucket of water and let it warm up before I spray these parts I next spray paint all my walls gray all the wood walls I don't want to have raw wood for my weathering alcohol to penetrate and deform now that is not uh, be all end all because I'll still add some alcohol to my wood on the front wall because I don't paint that wall. Um, the reasons for this are because I learned about it in an old fine scale miniatures kit by George Selios. So I just do this because it gives a more stable wall and a nice tooth for your next coat of paint which will be our cream color to stick to the wall so our walls are wet brushed with ivory Vallejo acrylic paint we use rep wet brushing because we don't want the wall to be sloppy looking and I think dry brushing a wall at this stage it makes it look sloppy a wet brushing covers more of the wall and allows you to scrape away some of the parts that you want to be peeled or uh, not so nice. After giving the windows a few hours to dry we take them we want to put the acetate on them but we want to do it the easy quick way. So what I, you, so what I do is I take my uh, Liquitex 
gloss gel medium and paint it right onto the acetate. This way I can take my windows and plop them into the gel medium. Now you got to judge at this point if you have enough gel medium to stick the windows to the to the acetate. Now I I stick these windows on a strip of acetate so that after the gel dries, I take a pair of scissors and cut away the excess acetate. This makes for a really nice window that fits right into the opening. If the windows don't fit right into the opening, trim a little bit more acetate off the back. Now this can be done with your scissors or a sharp number 11 blade. Now what's not shown in the photos is that these walls are braced in behind. They have fairly substantial bracing because I kind of like to uh, wet my models to no end. And that's, you know, some, some of my techniques are to avoid wetting the models more because in the past I really have gone all out on these. So bracing them will challenge all that moisture. Moving on to the store front, I wanted to change my color of green to add that monochromatic feel to the palette. So I took some BNSF Heritage Green, which is kind of like a forest green, uh, a real dark uh, blue-green kind of color. And this is going to contrast really nicely with our olive green windows that go around the upper floor and around the backs of the building. So we just painted the card storefront to which I really like these card storefronts. They're, they're just so simple to put together. It's, it's a really a pleasure to build. Uh, it's, it's a credit to the designer there. So I started by painting the card, the standard olive green, so that it has a base undercoat. And then I kind of sloppily dabbed my BNSF Heritage Green over top of it. And as you can see, there are a lot of spots in the front window area that you can see the olive green sticking through. That is by design. Now, these are 3M two-sided tape backed parts. That's a mouthful. <laughs> but what is really nice about that is that this 3M tape on the back of these card walls makes for a the ultimate window product. I know it's really hard to get this to work well with small windows. Been there, done that, but it is a really awesome effect because gluing acetate to walls is a challenge. And that's why I use the gloss medium on the other walls because it's, it's not so easy to tape windows to the walls. Like specifically, walls that are put on the side, if you tape your acetate behind, the, the wall, the window doesn't actually touch the window munions, which makes no sense at all. However, this two-sided tape uh, storefront is awesome. And within a few steps, we got it together and looking good on the building. However, I wanted to change the cream color on the main building to a real cream color. So I painted our ivory Vallejo paint on the panels and then gave it a touch of Dr. Ben's aged white, which is a, a real, is a little bit more yellow in the color. And I think it's, it really stands out really nicely on the model. That's why I like these monochromatic color palettes, because you really just, you jump a color away and you just add all the variation in the world that you, you really need. Now, before we can assemble our building, we have to get that half wall done on the front. So something I did not do in the walls around the back was add nail holes. I don't think it's necessary. I did actually later on 
when the model was finished. Add a few nail holes around the back, but I had originally decided that it wasn't important. Nail holes is a great debate, but not to be, it's not so great to be a part of it because in the end, it's your decision. And who cares what somebody else thinks? On the internet, opinions are like butts. You know how that one goes. Now I wet brushed the front wall. I did not paint it, have it originally painted gray. After bracing the back of the walls, we start to assemble the structure itself. And to do this, I assembled the back three walls with my squaring tools to make sure that it was nice and square and ready for the front wall to be put on. Um, and the front wall was put together in a certain way. Uh, I started with the top of the wall so that it could be flush with the rest of the walls at the top. I wanted to, it to look exactly like the other walls in the building to be perfectly square and dried before I start assembling the store front. Because each piece on the store front is uh, glued together and kind of assembled, it's really important to me to make sure that the, the structure itself is square and true before I move on. Then, when I start assembling the storefront, I am able to take, take it piece by piece, clamp them together, and make sure everything works flawlessly as I go along. Even then, I still kind of made the inside section of my storefront a little cockeyed. I don't know, sorry. It, you really don't notice it, but you know, if you want to slam me for something, I'll provide you with uh, the bat. Now everything might look normal in this photo here. However, what you're looking at are not actually the doors. The doors, I kind of placed them on my spray painting booth and then spray painted them green and uh, they disappeared. It happens from time to time. I couldn't find them anywhere until I had to paint them gray. And then I noticed them there. So that got fixed later on. These, the doors aren't so skinny. These look skinny. Uh, those are actually the trim that goes around the, uh, the edges. Uh, so we fixed that. Also, as said before, I used the nice crown mold for the top of the storefront. However, in the kit, there are alternative methods, methods for the for this area to, to be able to do that trim in between the first and second floor. I, I also added a piece of my own wood uh, to the top of it. Uh, there was a piece of card in the kit to do this, but I replaced it with a real piece of wood because, you know, wood can look like wood better than card. And that's not a, a hit on the kit, that's just what I did. So now we finally get to the roofing. I, 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 I really wanted to get here because it's so easy to do roofs with laser cut shingles like these. Now I do have to say that it's a little chintzy. Like uh, you have to uh, mark out where your dormers and chimney are going to be on the roof and not place shingles in those spots. If you do that, you'll have ample shingles to finish this roof. I didn't do that. I just went willy-nilly straight through and uh, shingled all the roofs and found out at the end I was about a strip short so I had to go back and grab scrap pieces of shingles and piece them in one by one but I got there in the end so I have to say that there is enough shingle in the kit it's just that uh, if you do not place shingles underneath the dormer and where the chimney go in that's how that's what you should do so what I did to do these fancy shingles is I just took my warmed can of gray spray paint. I like this paint color because it is a dark gray 
and can easily take on a tone of blue or green. Uh, just a hue, something like it, it can, it, like with having the trim color green in the building, it kind of really brings out the color of the gray. They work together nicely in my opinion. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Probably didn't, but who cares? So we painted our car, our, our shingles gray. We allowed them to dry. And then I have to add a variation to this roof. Now I don't really want to add 100% paint because it, you know, it kind of gives a hard edge and makes it uh, uh, noticeable. So what I do is I make a wash, an acrylic wash. And the way I do that is I add 50-50 paint and alcohol to the mix. Uh, sometimes I add a little bit of uh, maybe a drop of uh, glycerin, but that kind of um, makes it flow a little bit too much, I'd say, uh, for this application. Alcohol and paint. Now I used a, a little bit of silver and deck tan in my wash, and just using a wedge brush, uh, streak the entire sheet of shingles. Now don't worry about the, the, the line going from row to row to row to row. When you start placing these shingles onto the roof, it'll all mingle into some mosaic of color and, and stain. After we have our shingles glued on and then placed under a weight and allowed to dry, I brace the back of the boards and tape the panels together with painter's tape on the inside. Now, this is just to make it so that when we glue our building on, it's easier to keep them together. But on the other hand, gluing them together like this doesn't allow you to uh, take a, all the curl out of the card. So you got to be careful with how you add these panels to the roof. I don't know. It's, it's a spot where people will notice uh, sloppiness. And to prove that, in the finished models at the end, you can see my roof is kind of curled. And uh, I don't like that at all. I think that's the flaw in my build. Once the roof is glued on, and has been totally dried overnight, so it's a solid glued structure. I start working on the clock dormer. Now, in the instructions, it mentions to build the dormer all together and then place it on the model. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to place the clock portion, the front wall, in the slot that's provided in the roof and then build the dormer sides on top of the roof after the fact so that everything looks as tight as it can be. Toy is a tiger, as they'd say. Or maybe you're not old enough to know what that means. Sorry about your luck. After building the dormer the way I just described, it was too tall and had to been, I had to cut off two clapboards off of the top. The look is really nice. So to glue these portions to the roof, I mixed some flat black paint with weld bond glue. This kind of makes it look gray, but it's not gray. Don't believe what you see. What you see is white glue mixed with gray paint. And when the white glue turns to clear glue, it'll be black, okay? so. There's a tip there for you. Now, because I'm using weld bond glue, I can hold these pieces down for about a minute and they'll tack on very nicely. And that's, that's the beauty of weld bond glue. It's, it's really nice in every way. You should be using it yourself if it's available in your area. The chimney we painted burnt orange from a rattle can and then used a new technique that I'm working on with Liquitex Ultramat Medium and soapy water. It makes for a really nice mortar technique. 
you'll see that technique written about in a future article somewhere. Well, my final thoughts on this kit are that I really like it. And I offered to send it to uh, CCK so that they can show it at Springfield and immediately regretted it. Because I look at this structure and I can fit it beside any one of my Craftsman kit dioramas. I actually have been placing it in various di dioramas and I love it in every one. It just fits so perfectly. And that's... A key, and that's due to the design of the kit. I really like it. So, I don't know. I think this is a really nice craftsman kit. And if you're going to cut your teeth on a craftsman kit, this is the nice one to do it on. Carolina craftsman kits have a number of kits in their line. And every one of them seem perfect for my railroad. So go over there and check out their kits for yourself. Now this was a sponsored video by Carolina Craftsman Kits and you know sure they sent me the kit however the judgment on how good of a kit it is should be made by you through the photos I provide. Now of course I like the kit and maybe yes it's because I got it for free but then again I just wrote about it, I just put all this effort into this video and we built this kit really nicely. If it didn't come out looking this good, then the review would be a fail. You know, it would be a bad kit. But we got it to this stage and we did it fairly simply. So I think this is a, a kit that is uh, accomplishable by a beginner. I think that if you are an expert modeler, you're going to really enjoy it because, you know, this really isn't a scratch build kit in any way whatsoever. It lacks little metal detail parts that could be put around the structure that are available in other craftsman kits, but that isn't a deal breaker for me. So all in all, I think I give this kit two thumbs up. So guys, thanks for watching this video. Uh, I want to thank Jeff Grove over at Carolina Craftsman Kits for his support. If you know of a Craftsman Kit Company or a Laser Kit Company or a Plastic Kit Company who wants to have build reviews like these done, uh, send them my way or tell them that you saw this video and show them it. Maybe they'll come this way and send me some, some content for the channel. If you want to support these videos, please go over to patreon.com slash ronperry. It is the best way to show your support and the money that is put into the Patreon is put right into the supplies and kits for the channel. It's content money. And uh, you know, if you appreciate videos like this, if you want to watch some actual building, and uh, get some real uh, insight into a quality of a kit, then you should probably consider contributing to Patreon. Thanks for watching.